Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. This is KY4 BDP for the Lake Cumberland Area Amateur Radio Association. We are going to showcase today one of my favorite radios uh, that I use in my truck from time to time as well as a base station, kind of just uh, how the mood suits me, um, the FTM 400 XDR. You've probably seen this on Instagram, Facebook, but we've posted a number of pictures on this, uh, and I've had it in a couple other videos as well. We just did a crossband repeater video not too long ago. And what I wanted to show you today is how to take this out of the box and program it for a repeater. Today we're just going to do two meters, but you could do it just as easily for 70 centimeters. Um, and I just really like the radio. It's got the color screen. It can do digital C4 uh, FM with uh, Yesus. Uh, just really, really happy with this unit. It's very stable, uh, works well, and it's light. has the, uh, uh, the uh, faceplate that you can put where it's much more easily seen in your vehicle, uh, and then the base unit can go under your seat, for instance. Uh, just again, a wonderful unit. So in the next segment, let's program this unit for a two meter repeater as if we just took it out of the box. So I'll be right back. All right, so now we have the FTM 400 XTR basically powered on. I've been playing around with this unit a little bit just here and there. But this video is to show you if I got my technician's license or if I were going to input a new repeater, maybe I've not used this repeater before, I've moved and I've got a license, at least a technician, how would I program it for the repeater in my area? Now, right off the bat, folks, join a club. Find out who those uh, amateur radio clubs are in your area. I'm so fortunate to have the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association as my guide in a lot of these new endeavors on ham radio for my brother and myself. You will have a local club near you. Um, find out who it is and who runs it and attend a meeting. Go to their website. Find out what some of these frequencies, offsets, and tones you're going to need to use their repeater. Um, best etiquette is to join the club. That way, as you use their repeater, you're also helping to pay for the upkeep and maintenance of that repeater. So let's do a factory reset as if we just took it out of the box. So I'm going to hold down the display button here. And there is an option for resetting clone down here at the bottom. And we're going to click on that. And we're going to choose factory reset. And we're going to click OK. It's going to reboot the unit. And when it comes up, it's going to ask for my call sign as if it were literally just coming out of the box. Got a little trill there. Now let's go ahead and put in my call sign. And we're done. Let's hit enter. We're going to reboot one more time and it should show my call sign. And indeed it does. Now, are we done? No. Let's say we move to a new area and uh, we're going to set up our FT4, FTM 400 that maybe we used in a different location. People move all the time, so you may actually have to reprogram it. How would we do that? Well, one of the ways to kind of get started with this process is you can actually click on VFOA up top here. And we also have a VFOB where maybe you do 70 centimeters down here on the bottom and two meters there at the top. Let's just do two meters for now. We can actually click on that and that will blink and now I can use my knob over here to the right to begin that frequency change. Now that's going to quit blinking and if I now turn the knob it does the uh, the point whatever. So we need to go up to 0 0.880. So let's do that. I'm going to take a few turns to go all the way up to 880 but we should get there pretty quickly right there and I'm going to turn this down just a little bit just in case somebody comes through but now I'm on the frequency that I need. Maybe I looked this up on Repeater Book. Maybe I went to the club website. 
but I've got it in there now. Now, if you may have noticed when I was on 146.00, this was a plus sign in the top left corner. Now it is a minus. That's known as an offset. I'm going to listen on 146.880 because the repeater is transmitting on this frequency, but I'm going to transmit on what's called an offset. And normally in this frequency range, it's going to be a negative offset. 0 0.6 is going to be the offset. And so when I transmit with this unit, it'll be 146.280. So how do we know if we have our shift on the repeater um, uh, frequency uh, tone for uh, tone squelch and whatnot? How do we get all of that in there? Well, we're going to hold down this display button again. And this is going to bring up the main menu. And again, when you take it right out of the box, this is where you're going to have to go. One of the first places we're going to go is signaling. So let's highlight that, and sure enough, there's our tone squelch frequency. Now at this point, uh, it's set to 100. That's a very common starting point. It could be as low as 69 or 7, and as high as 253, I believe. Our repeater uses 77 hertz. So to adjust that, let's click on it again so that this goes orange right here. Let's use our dial to go down to 77. And voila, we can hit back. And now we're set on 77 hertz. Now, is there anything else under uh, signaling? Well, let's scroll down a little bit. Let's see if there's anything down here. Uh, I'm not seeing anything that's going to be interesting. So let's hit back. Now, that's our frequency. But how do we get the unit to actually use that tone? Well, I'll show you that in just a minute. But before we go there, let's go to another menu option, Config. And we're going to skip the date time adjustment, but what we are going to do is come down to this auto repeat or repeater shift. Are we trying to do a, a shift when interacting with a repeater? By and large, yes. And we want that turned on. Does a repeater have to do an offset? My understanding is it doesn't have to, uh, but ours does. So that is on. And if we scroll down a little bit, not only do we have the auto repeater shift on, but we also have repeater shift uh, and you can see the minus is selected. Now we already saw that a little while ago, but if I wanted to change that, all I'd have to do is click on this and you can see it's changing it and we'll put it back to minus. It could be a plus, it could be off if you're not using a shift and it can be minus once again. We are done here, so let's go back out. Now are we done done? Well, actually no, if we go back one more, Right now, you can see that we have the squelch button down here at the bottom, but it's not doing any kind of tone squelch. The, the tone is set, but it's not set to actually use tone squelch. So how do we turn that on? Well, in this unit, uh, there may be another way, but the way I've always done it is I'm going to hold down squelch until it actually comes up with a menu. There we go. And you'll notice there's a number of other things here, but what I'm interested in is the one called Squelch Noise. We're going to select that, and we're basically done. So now if we hold down the Squelch Noise button down here in the bottom, that will get rid of the menu. And you'll notice now that button has been reprogrammed to show Squelch Noise. And if we click on it, I can change it so that I can start using my tones. Now this is a um, transmit encoder on 77 hertz, so I would unlock the repeater by transmitting that tone, and on receive I would use no tone. My unit would just receive it back on 146.880, no problem. If I hit it again, I can do tone squelch on both transmit and receive. So my unit won't unlock unless the repeater communicates on 77 hertz. Uh, if I click it again, there's a few other settings. There's reverse, and there's uh, digital, and there's uh, program, and there's pager, and there's off, basically. Let's go back to just tone squelch, or transmit only squelch on 77 hertz. Now, we're getting something right there. Let's see what we're getting. Yeah, the repeater is ID'ing. So, the frequency's good. The repeater just ID, but I wonder if people will be able to hear me. Can I unlock the repeater? Well, let's try that out. So what I'm going to do is try to hit the repeater. I'm going to put out my call sign. May or may not get anything back. We just heard the ID just a moment ago, but let's see if I'm actually hitting the repeater. I should get some kind of a little tail on the back, even if it's not IDing. This is KY4BDP, testing repeater functionality. 
there was that tail on the end. And that lets me know that I actually unlocked the repeater and it hit me back. No ID because it literally just ID'd no, no more than 30 seconds ago. Occasionally somebody who might be listening on their frequency might come back. Sometimes not. It just depends on who's active right now. Let's put out one more call. We might get lucky. This is KY4 BDP testing new uh, frequency uh, setup on radio rig. KY4 BDP testing. Again, we got the tail there at the end, so we're definitely hitting the repeater. And if nobody comes back, I'm okay with that because for a video, it'd be kind of cool, but we don't have to have that. But that, my friends, is how you uh, program in a repeater on the FTM 400 when you literally just take it out of the box. Set up your call sign, go into signaling, go into config, and then reprogram the squelch button down there at the bottom so that you're at least on transmit on your tone. All right, so now we have the FTM 400 XDR programmed uh, manually, and we don't want to have to do that again. We would like to save this memory or into memory with the offset and so forth. How would I do that? It's actually quite easy. We're going to press the memory button down here, and in fact, we're going to hold it down. So let me get rid of it. There we go. And you can see the memory or the frequency that I just set is now traveling in that orange bar. I can make this my home frequency. I can make it my first memory uh, preset, for instance. Let's make it home because that is, in fact, my two meter home repeater. And let's give it a name L Cara. Enter. Now, what's the last step? You got to press your memory button again. We're going to do an overwrite. And as they like to say in Great Britain, Bob is your uncle. So at this point, there's Elcar in big, bold letters. You can see the frequency above it. We're still doing the minus offset. We still have our transmit uh, tone, and we are good to go. And from now on, that's going to be my home frequency. So there you have it. We now have a programmed FTM 400. Uh, you could program manually all of your um, frequencies for your area. Kind of tedious. There are some good programs out there like RT Systems and Chirp. I use RT Systems, but mainly because my Elmer does. My brother learned how to use Chirp on the Bowfangs and uses Chirp on not only those, but I think some of his other radios. But those programs can make programming a, uh, a unit like this so much easier. In fact, let's have some fun and let's put this unit back to the way I had it, which is with a lot of program stations. Remember the SD card. So let's put this guy back in. All righty, he is now plugged into the unit there in the back. How would I get this back to the way it was? Well, we're going to hit the display and setup button one more time. We're going to come down here to the SD card, and we're going to choose backup. Now, what's weird about this from an IT standpoint, I would never have made this menu backup. I would have made this import or um, something like that, but the way Yesu has this, it's actually called backup. But you'll notice that we have an option to write the SD card. That would be the actual backup. Or if I want to take a backup that I already have and read from the card to put it back into the unit, then I'm going to read from the SD. Again, if I had done this menu, I would have done an import instead of backup. But I'm going to choose read from SD, click it again. We're going to do all. That's going to get me the memories and the setup as well. Press all. Are we going to do all? We are. And it should reboot again once it's done. There we are. We're completed going to reboot. My call sign should still be in there from the backup. Of course, we program that as well. And here we are. And how do I know that my uh, backup is back? Well, you can see I've got a memory channel here of 091 simplex. This is when we do our simplex net. And if I just scroll up a little bit, there's the 443 centimeter repeater. There's our Elcara digital and uh, transmit and receive. And then we've got uh, some remote sites. But if I come on back down, oops, let's stop right here. Uh, you can see that I've got Elcar already programmed, both for transmit and receive, by the way, for tone. So I'm back to the way the unit was.
but if it were brand new out of the box, that's how I would actually at least begin the process of putting new memories into the setting those frequencies, setting the offsets, and doing those memories. Well, I hope you've had a good time looking at the FTM 400. Again, uh, programming one of these doesn't need to be difficult, um, but you need to learn some of the basics. Uh, get your frequencies, get your offsets uh, and tones off repeater book or from your local club. Start programming them in. Even if you only have two or three to start with, uh, work with an Elmer in your club. They may already have the programming done on this unit like mine did to where I didn't have to create all of them by hand. Could you do it by hand? Absolutely. Do you want to? Not really, but uh, it can be done. It's just a repetitive process, and that's for both 2 meters and 70 centimeters. I'm KY4BDP for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Thanks for dropping by, and we'll see you down the road. 73s.